Welcome, everyone. Yeah. Now, we come together every week as disciples of Jesus, as individual members of the collective body of Christ, and I bring you news. Frustrating news, we have all heard this past week about the Delta variant. Clark County had a 62% jump in COVID infections from last week, and that moved us from the substantial, unfortunately, to the high transmission level per CDC metrics. Therefore, the CDC, State of Washington, and Clark County Public Health have all recommended indoor masking for everyone in areas of substantial or high transmission. Of course, we're in high. Again, I know this is disappointing. Uh, I mean, we had really worked hard. We thought we were seeing this behind us. Uh, and now we're back into this temporary time of airborne viral risk. And it's... We have to remember that our children and our grandchildren don't have access to the vaccines. And vaccinated people can unknowingly be transmitting this virus. So as annoying as it is, we're gonna have to keep wearing these a little bit longer. It doesn't mean that we stop sharing time together or worshiping in whatever safe way we choose. It merely means a little bit longer because we already know how to keep each other safe. We really do. So while the Delta variant is infecting vaccinated people too, remember that fully vaccinated people are not seeing severe illness and rarely need hospitalization. So thank you for donning your mask a little bit longer and for coming to today's service. Um, personally for me, I really enjoy being close to you again and feeling that energy and love. It, it is really amazing. Um, also, the announcement about after service. Don't run off after service. We will, yes, have a brief, this time we're going to call it a coffee quarter instead of a coffee hour because we're only going to maybe spend about 15 minutes um, outside with beverages and snacks. And because we're outside, we can take our masks off. Uh, then again, we'll mask up and we'll get started on that congregational meeting where we have a lot of important business. Um, it'll be in the social hall and we also will have Zoom available. So uh, remember, we're voting on open positions for council and endowment committees. So prayerfully consider if that might be in your future, um, as well as approving the pastor call committee. Uh, so whether you're here virtually or live, we look forward to seeing you after church. I get the good news part, so I'm pretty excited. Thank you, Deanna, for that. Um, I get to announce that there is a pink rose on our altar, and it is for Carisia, um, the great-granddaughter of Janet Brooks. Is that right? Great-granddaughter? Yeah. So let's... Think. And also, she uh, brought these lovely flowers to celebrate um, the memory of Don for her seven years together. Um, so, uh, let's see. This week, we have, well, we have the congregational meeting after service, and we have uh, the text narration, or the uh, Bible study narration on Tuesday at 1, and we have the text study at 1 o'clock on Wednesday, and that one's still via Zoom. So, um, and if you're interested in joining either, either of those, please let us know. Um, men's breakfast will remain on Zoom uh, at 7.30 on Thursday. And I think that's it. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> Just checking. Uh, please rise today as we um, turn our hearts towards worship. We start today, as we start every day, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, 
confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sins. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Prayer of the day. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior, and Lord. Amen. I do have two other... um, You may be seated. Um, I do have two other announcements, and one is that we have two memorials this week. Uh, One is um, for Lisa Bleak. That one is tomorrow, and it's in Tumwater. You're pointing at me. I don't know. Oh, she's counting. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and then the one on Thursday is for Ruth and Alan Hansen, and it'll be a dual funeral or a memorial celebration for life here at Zion, and there'll be a light reception afterward. And um, they're kindly doing that for the church as they know that Ruth and Alan um, hold some very special places in many hearts. So we hope to see you there.
is from 1 Kings, starting at the 19th chapter. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Our second Bible reading is from Ephesians, starting with the fourth verse. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath, and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God, as beloved children, and live in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Maybe. Good morning. Good morning. And good morning, kids online. Uh, today's message is going to be: What does Jesus mean by "I am the living bread"? First, we're going to go back to the church calendar and talk about where we are today in our church calendar. Remember, we start our church year with the first day of Advent. 
It leads us and helps us prepare for the great celebration of Christmas. And then we have our great green growing Sundays in the winter. And then we're in the season of Lent, preparing for the great celebration of Easter. Then our Easter season up to Pentecost, which is the birth of our Christian church. And now we are in all these great growing green seasons, all the way back to the first day of Advent again. We are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 Sundays, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. Almost halfway through the spring, fall, summer, fall seasons, back to Advent. Okay, what did Jesus mean by, I am the living bread? Does anybody know what these are? You can't see. These are cookies. Did anyone ever get a chance to make cookies with their grandma or their mom? Me too. But the very best cookie maker was my brother, John. He still is. He makes the best cookies. But what I love about cookies is they have all these ingredients. Flour, butter, milk. And all these ingredients, when you mix them together and you put them in the oven, they come out to be these delicious cookies. But what I find interesting is some of these ingredients all by themselves, just flour, just salt, just butter, just aren't that tasty. Once you mix them up, they are delicious. Well, I'm thinking of the word recipe today, and that's the instructions of how we mix all these things up to make really good cookies. What did Jesus mean by I am the living bread? Well, Jesus also gave us a recipe. And in the living bread are things like learning the Bible stories, praying, worshiping. These are the ingredients for the recipe that makes the living bread. This is what Jesus taught his disciples, and this is what he wants us to teach others and how to live our life with this recipe to live the good life that God wants us all to live. So please pray with me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus who teaches us the recipe of living bread using prayers, Bible stories, and worship that we can enjoy and share with others. And all God's people said, Amen. Good morning. Grace and peace from God, the provider, Jesus, the bread of life, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Walking into a Panera restaurant, there are words painted on the wall. The first words you see when you walk in are, start with bread. This is a handy cue when thinking of Jesus being the bread of life. The sixth chapter in John is 71 verses long. It comes in at number 10 of the 10 longest chapters in the Bible. Psalm 119 is the longest um, at 176 verses. So it does take a while to go through John chapter 6. The first part of John 6 is where Jesus feeds the crowd of 5,000 with five barley loaves and two fish. Jesus then walks on water and crosses over to the other side. The next day, the people who were witnesses to the feeding of the 5,000 and also remained there overnight got into boats and went looking for Jesus. As we continue our journey through John chapter 6, it is important to note that these are at least some of the people who had eaten with Jesus the day before. They had witnessed a miracle and they came to Jesus seeking more. The sign reads, start with bread. There are many weeks of the bread of life scripture that we find in John 6, and the lectionary brings us opportunity to think about Jesus being the bread of life for several weeks. We sat with the scriptures last Sunday where Jesus started explaining that he is the bread of life, and today we come to the second part of that conversation. Last week, Jesus explained that he was different than the manna given to the Israelites in the wilderness. The people had been following Moses, and Moses had been following God, and Jesus is trying to set the record straight 
by letting them all know that it was God who provided for them, not Moses. And this Sunday, more is revealed. It turns out that many of these people who followed Jesus across the lake know him. They know his family, they know his upbringing, and they know his parents. They were saying, is, this, is, the, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can we now say I have come how can he now say I have come down from heaven? Even though these people witnessed a miracle that they that could never be explained, they just could not get past the fact that Jesus was the son of a carpenter. In that time period, you would take on your family trade. If your father was a carpenter, then you would become a carpenter. That's just how it was. So this group of people were having trouble getting past that they knew Jesus. I'm sure you can relate. Somewhere we have underestimated what someone can do. Maybe there's someone in your own hometown who was underestimated. There might have been a person who went to your school and got in trouble a lot, or someone who flew under the radar and now is successful. There might be a person who you know their background and you thought you would and they would never make it this far and they did. You know their education level or the economic status or their occupation and somewhere you put it into your head that that person can only do or achieve only certain things. An example for Zion maybe might be Jimmy Rogers who attended this church. A man from Little Camas, Washington, who turned singer and songwriter and became famous. So here the people question Jesus. And Jesus is asking his fellow companions to move past all that they know or think they know and see the miracle that they actually witnessed, the feeding of the 5,000. He is asking them to know that it was not just a magic trick. It was holy. It was from God. It was God. And so he starts telling the people that he is the bread of life. And all they need to do to receive this amazing gift is to get past what they think they knew and be full recipients of the gift of the feeding of the 5,000. The gift is Jesus. The gift is eternal life but they know what they know. The sign reads, start with bread. Jesus says, if you eat of this bread and believe, you will receive eternal life. Now, eternal life was not necessarily a new concept, but for the Hebrew people, it was not fully a part of their beliefs. And if you have never heard of eternal life before, I'm sure that was a very palatable desire. No different than it is for us now. It means something. It means something holy, and it means something amazing. Each week I stand at the table and try and bring communion to you using different words to help you make it sacred so that it's not just something you do absentmindedly. It's something that you come and prayerfully appreciate. It's something that you come and prayerfully seek out. I pray it's something that you desire and need. So I ask, are you paying attention? Each week we all come to the table hungry, hungry for Jesus, thirsting for Jesus. We come for just a moment, wherever our table may be, here at Zion or at home, but we come needing something. We come needing Jesus. We come needing that bread of life. We come empty and we come hungry and we come waiting to be filled. Holy Communion is one of our blessed sacraments, and we have the privilege of taking it on Sunday. We are strengthened by this simple act because we are filled by Jesus. But we are also forgiven. Those words of forgiveness are important. We come seeking Jesus, and mostly we come, I hope, purposefully. But even in our most absent-minded days, or on days where we feel spiritually empty, Jesus comes to us. It's a mutual exchange. 
we come to the table and Jesus comes to us. So we start with the bread. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life, and whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. So we start with the bread. So come to the communion table, wherever that may be for you, and come empty, come wanting to be filled. Come seeking Jesus and be met where you are in life. Come with prayer and come to be heard. Come with confession and come to be forgiven. And come with hope of the promise of eternal life. Come in community with each other, knowing you are not alone. And come as an individual with an open heart. Come seeking Jesus. Come hungry, come thirsty. But you leave forgiven. You leave filled. And you leave strengthened for the world. It's in the simplest of things that you receive God. Jesus loves you just the way you are, and all of you are welcome at the Lord's table. So start with the bread. In Jesus' holy name, amen.
faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all creation. Amen. For the Church of Christ in all its diverse forms, for mission developers, new mission starts, and all communities of faith exploring new models and ministry for the sake of the gospel, for congregations in transition or facing difficult decisions about their future, God in your mercy. For the health and well-being of creation, for shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun, for lakes, rivers, and oceans contaminated by pollution, and all who lack clean water, God in your mercy. For those called to positions of authority in our legal system, we pray. For judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure their fair administration of justice for corrections officers and prison chaplains, that they would deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated. God, in your mercy. For all who cry out to you in their affliction, for exiles and refugees and others who face long and difficult journeys, uncertain about the future, for all who mourn the death of a loved one, for all who are sick, especially those who remember aloud or in our hearts. God, in your mercy. For those who have been raised to eternal life, we give thanks. With all the saints, we praise you for the bread of life that keeps us in your love forever. God, in your mercy. We lift these in all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. We share a sign of peace.
what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. holy, almighty, and merciful God. Your most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Having come into the world, he fulfilled for us your holy will and accomplished our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave it to his disciples, he gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we remember the Lord Jesus until he comes. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Let us speak the words that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. When we come to this table, we come seeking Jesus, the bread of life. We come in different forms and different ways, some rejoicing and some sorrowful. We come some seeking forgiveness and some not sure what to believe. But you come. And whether this table is set before you here in person or at home, it is the Lord's Supper. And we stand where it's just simple things, just bread and some wine. It's a small thing. It's a little sip of both of those. But it's about Jesus. And Jesus is bigger than any meal you can ever take. Jesus fills you, fills you with forgiveness, fills you with strength, fills you with glory of God. Brings you to that space about belief and everlasting life. So we stand here knowing Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever comes to me will never thirst. We take our meal today in holiness. We take this meal as a community of believers. We take this meal together and as individuals with open hearts. All are welcome at the table of Christ. Let us do communion together. This is the body of Christ given for you.
you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Ministries. Go in peace. 
You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.